Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I want to continue my Son of I host um, series of videos. So far I've done two videos. On the first one there was just a very quick overview of the main capabilities. We haven't really looked at the machine, just looked at the listings and you know what was available on the Sonoff side. And on the first video we did the first uh, deep dive into the like the Zigbee functionality and how it works as a coordinator and how you can create scenes. And we also looked at some of the features that I, I said I'm going to talk about in the follow-up video. So this is the first follow-up video. And today I want to talk about the well something which is available in this Docker screen and uh, where we can link our existing Wi-Fi devices to the iHost and then you know create scenes with it and then you know make them you know work together with all the Zigbee devices that we have uh, configured in the previous video. But um, as I was just preparing for this video, a new update has been released or it, it was made available. So I was running 1.4.1 and then 1.5.3 became available. And just want to go through the quick changes. Uh, um, so I get some toggles for the network indicator and then system log. Yep, I mean, uh, that's probably uh, could be useful for, for feedback. There is actually a feedback button here as well. Um, there are slight changes on the UI, like I think the, the buttons are slightly bit bigger. On the, you know, on the main device screen, you don't see a lot of difference. Probably what you can see here is I have a POW R2 because I've already tested the integration. So this is how that device looks like. So uh, now it is available besides my Zigbee uh, buttons. And also we have a Zigbee map. So this is supposed to show you your Zigbee network. So you see the iHost is in the in the middle and then all my Zigbee devices are connected to the iHost. But if you would have a, a smart plug or <clears throat> actually I'm thinking about what, uh, yeah, so if you would have the Zigbee Mini, uh, the Zigbee Basic or the Zigbee Mini Extreme that are main power devices, they become routers. So we, it means that if you have a um, like a sensor or a, well, it can be basically any Zigbee device which cannot reach the iHost because it's too far away, but there is another router device in between, it would be able to communicate through that. And that would be clearly visible in this map. So maybe it would be useful to visit this in the future. If you have seen some of my other videos where I shown the um, uh, Zigbee to MQTT, um, well, that's my Zigbee network that I use at home that also has a very similar map as well. So it nicely shows how uh, the devices are communicating through routers uh, to the main coordinator. But uh, this is just a nice thing to have and then you can verify how the network looks like. And uh, I don't really see here, uh, some of the visuals have changed. Nothing has changed on the security mode. I don't see any changes here. Um, I mean, well, this is something that I need to test and, and and the Docker is, it really looks the same. But now we are talking about this one and especially we are going to talk about this component here, which is available right when you install um, or right when you get your iHost. So let's talk about this because this allows you to control your other e -wheeling devices that are Wi-Fi devices using the iHost. So first what you need to do in preparation uh, to, to use this component is you have to insert a micro SD card and then you just uh, uh, click here to format. So when you just uh, put in a blank card, it needs to be formatted. So you click here, there is a, there will be a format button here and you just wait. And then once you, uh, once that is formatted, it takes uh, a couple of seconds. Then on, on here, uh, I mean, I have obviously installed this uh, EVLink smart home component, but uh, for you, it would just say install. So you just click install. And also when you install it, I think there is going to be a button which says run. And that's it. Again, it takes about like a minute. It doesn't take anything more. So this is like a, <clears throat> a software component which is now running on the iHost in, a, in some sort of container. But um, all we care about is that we have added additional functionality to an iHost. So once everything is up and running, all you need to do is you need to click on this more info button. And then you have a few other tabs here, but then what we really care about is uh, this web UI tab in which you first you need to log on to your eVLink uh, account. So this is the 
user ID or phone number and the password that you use in your EV-Link Android or iOS application as well. Because what you are going to see here is you are going to see all the devices uh, that you have in your account. And you can see that I already have the POW release 2, which um, is synced because you can see you could see it on my devices, but now I can see all my other devices. <clears throat> and of course, just like with the NS Panel Pro, when it came out, it supported a bunch of devices, but it didn't support everything. And actually, I have found some information on that. So if you click on this logo, and then you have a device list, and then you have, you know, click on supported devices. So this is going to be a quite long list, so I'm not going to stop, but I'm probably just going to just uh, go through this like this, and then you can pause the video and maybe stop like this. And now you can see that uh, these devices are the ones, for example, the M5 series, which are relatively new uh, Wi-Fi switches. They are not supported. TH10 and 16, which I have at the moment not supported, and the TH Elite and Origin is not supported. And uh, yeah, I don't have the iFan and the SPM. And I have, I think I have D1. And then, you know, the Wi-Fi bulbs are not supported as well. So they are coming, you know, next month. Well, it's already April. So like next month, uh, in a month or two. And by the way, you can look at the supported Wi-Fi, sorry, Zigbee devices as well. But I think this list is very small because <clears throat> they really only mention IKEA, Hue, and Akara, and some of the SmartThings devices. But even in the previous video, I was able to link a Zigbee, uh, sorry, not Zigbee, Blitzwolf, Zigbee door sensor, and it was working fine. So, but obviously this list is so huge that I guess they just picked a few devices that they are supported at the moment from different vendors, I mean. Okay, so let's go back to the integration. And... Um, and now all we need to do is basically we just need to link all these devices. So I can just click here and then here. So I'm just going to just select all of them. And yeah, I have these number of devices. So he, uh, on this screen, you only show the ones that are online at the moment. So I have a few other devices, but I have only plugged these in at the moment. But you can see I can't use the THLE, the M5 and the TH10 because they would be coming in the future. And you do this and then, and then that's it. And, you know, now I can operate my, you know, touch or I can do, you know, on my NS panel, it can see that the NS panel has two outputs and I can control both of these outputs. And um, yeah, I mean, as you can see, I have some settings so I can rename the device. I can rename the, the different channels if it's multi-channel. I can put them into different rooms. I haven't created any rooms, so everything is appearing in the same room. But um, that's pretty much it. So you don't see an awful lot of stuff here. And uh, also what I noticed is, for example, you know, if you if you have like the POW LED, if you click on this tile, it just uh, uh, switches them on and off. If you click on the three buttons, then you see the, uh, the, the screen. So for example, on the PW Elite, you can see the uh, the current consumption, and you can also access like a second screen where it shows the history. Well, it's been offline, so it's not go not really going to show anything. But for example, I don't see that on the POW release too. So you can see it just supports the on-off functionality. And uh, what about the POW? Yeah, so the original release one doesn't support that. So again, but this was exactly how it was looking uh, for the NS Panel Pro. That first you could, you know, control the devices and then later on some of these new functionalities started to appear. Uh, but let's see, you know, CH4. Yeah, I have the four outputs here. Um, and of course, as you can see, you can't control the schedules here can't control any of the other features. Those are still available in the EVLink application. Here on the screen, you will only get the, the main uh, functionality. So you can see that I've added all of them. And then, yeah, that's my TH T1, and that's the 4CH Pro NS panel we have already seen, and the others. So, you know, basic functionality, controlling them works. But let's also see what you can do in the scenes, because I would assume that they now appear in the uh, scene as well. So if I want to create a scene, 
and if let's say you know smart device and and of course you can see those devices here so let me just you know pick 4ch and then you can create an uh, an automation or a scene based on whether you know any of the channel gets turned on and off but if i select the let me select the pow elite because uh yeah so they only support the on off functionality i probably have to go back and then um, just remind myself if you can you know start any scenes based on let's say the power consumption on this one but in the iHost uh, only the you know the on off things are supported but let me uh, check the other side as well so smart device and obviously you can you know use the actions as well and again i would assume that the action is mainly based on you know switching them on and off or for ch pro yeah you can do this for me uh, do this with these channels but now what you can do is um well just like you could do in an EV link application as well let's say i can pick the um, the wireless button so this is the sort of button and when i click on it i want to control my touch and i want to reverse the state of the touch so um, so basically with this i added an extra zigbee button to my touch and if i do this okay and if i go back to my list of devices here so you can see the touch is off at the moment and let me find my zigbee button so if i click on it now the touch is on and if i click again it's off let me just show you so i click and on click and off and actually i'm not sure if uh, i mean how quickly the ui updates and the device actually is in the other room so i can't really tell how fast it actually switches but even with the ui it sort of yeah i mean the ui updates within a second but uh, i think the device actually is uh, uh, changed almost immediately so that's it um, we have basic control of our wi-fi devices obviously we'll still use the evlink application to set them up actually let me show you in the evlink application as well so as you can see i can still control my devices from here so i have the touch here you can see if i'm turning it on and off it updates immediately and let's say if i again use the button i push it now it turns off push it again it turns on so i think there is a slight bit of delay but it's still touching i would say probably within one second so i just created an integration between these two the only thing I haven't tested is if I would disconnect the internet connection, whether it would still be able to control the touch. But I think this is one of the other reasons why it only supports certain devices. Because even in the EVLink application, if I go to touch and you have this option which says LAN control, so it would only able to control devices which has this LAN control option um, because, well, it's all about LAN control. So the iHost is not uh, talking directly to the touch instead of you know talking to the cloud and the information coming back from the cloud that's the whole point of the local control so this is all i wanted to cover in this video you can see how you can control your older sonos wi-fi devices with the ihost you can how you can link basically the devices or sync your devices within the ev link account to your ihost and then create local automations uh, using the you know the scene functionality which is built into iHost and of course this doesn't impact anything else that you have already configured in the uh, EVLink application so the both of them work simultaneously between each other so I think that would be all for today if you are interested in any of the previous videos you will find the links in the video description and also um, a purchasing links to the iHost itself which I think it is still in pre-order at the release of this video but I hope you learned something new today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.